And this one's take a look at finding the antiderivative of the following here. So e to the x times the cosine x dx. This is a fairly long process, just so you're aware of that. So first of all, because you have a product of two functions, e to the x and cosine x, and they seem to have absolutely nothing in common, you don't have like a function in the derivative or something along those lines. In other words, e to the x and cosine x are completely different functions. That often tells you that you should use, for example, integration by parts. So in this particular case, that will take this form. This is something that you can use to remember how to do integration by parts, I late, and you go through it. So specifically, notice that in our case, you see t for trigonometric in this position, that's what the t represents, okay, trigonometric. That tells you that you can take this. The L is for logarithmic, A is algebraic, T is trigonometric, E is exponential. So in our case, cosine X is found. That's the trigonometric one before E to the X, which is the exponential one. That means you're going to do this. You're going to put U equals cosine X. That's the first stage. The next one will be the following here. So DV, since U equals cosine X, then DV must be equal to E to the X DX. Now, the next stage, you're going to do this. So DU will be equal to negative sine x, and then here dv integrated will give you that v equals e to the x. And now you proceed as follows the next stage, step number four. You set up the integral, and here it's going to get pretty long. So now remember the pattern for doing this is it kind of looks like this. You basically form this quantity, so vu minus, and then the integral here of v du. So that's integration by parts. Let's continue here. So v in our case is e to the x, and the u is cosine x. That's pretty easy. And then you subtract from that the integral. The integral now is v du, so v is e to the x. And then du will be the following. Be really careful because you see the sine x is a negative in front of it, so you can pull that out, put it in front of the e to the x right here. So it becomes, within the integral symbol there, negative e to the x, and then sine x dx. Just like that. So now you continue here, step number six. e to the x back at step number five, cosine x is fine. But now we have this new one that says e to the x sine x. So you have to go through that process basically again. So specifically, notice back at step number five, we have those two negatives kind of wrapping the integral symbol. Just pull out that negative so it becomes a positive outside, and that's it. So now what we have to do is work out this, e to the x and then sine x dx. And we have to go through that same process. So use ilate again. All right, so basically trig comes first. So you're going to put the following at the next stage. u equals sine x. du therefore equals cosine x dx. And I think here back at step number three, when I wrote negative sine x, I meant to also put dx. So back here at step number six, we have du equals cosine x dx. At the next stage, therefore, since u equals sine x, that means that, for example, dv here should be equal to e to the x and then dx. That means v will be also equal to e to the x. And now you set up this whole process again, so take a look. Remember, this is a completely separate integration by parts, so you have to form everything again. So at step number seven, I'm going to say, again, v times u. So I'm going to say here, e to the x sine x minus... And now I'm going to put the integral again. So the integral will look like e to the x, and then you will have here cosine x dx. And you know that I should stop right there because, think about this, at step number 8 I'm going to put all the pieces together. What we have thus far is the following, that back at step number 1, remember we had this. We had that the integral of e to the x and then cosine x dx. So far what we know is the following, that it's equal to this portion right here from step number five, that portion. So that's e to the x cosine x dx. But we also know that this portion right here, the second term from step number five, that's equal to the value that you found at step number seven. Remember that this, all of this work right here was required to express the integral of e to the x times sine of x dx. So for that reason, back at step number eight, that's an arrow. You have the following, you're going to put there, plus e to the x, sine x. So I'm replacing this entire thing from back in step number 5 with e to the x sine x minus the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. It's nothing obvious, but it works. And then minus e to the x, and then 
cosine x dx. But this is helping because now you can add e to the x cosine x dx from the right side to the left side. It's going to give you 2 e to the x cosine x dx equals e to the x cosine x. And here I meant not to put a dx, that's wrong. Plus e to the x sine x. So I took this term right, and I moved it to the left side of the equal symbol with addition. Which means lastly, at the last step, you just divide both sides by 2. Okay, so I'm dividing everywhere by 2, which is equivalent to just multiplying by a half. So on the left side, step number 10, these two is clear. And I end up with just e to the x cosine x dx equals 1 half of e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x. And that is the final answer. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like. I'll see you in another video.